Welcome to Still Growing in Grace, a program dedicated to inspiring joy, giving hope, and delighting in grace. I'm Mike Zenker, and I'll be sharing with you a message of hope that will expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. God already deeply loves you, totally accepts you, and really, really likes you. Growing in Grace Ministries Canada and Hope Fellowship, your community church, invite you to enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. All righty, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Still Growing in Grace. Today is a special day. Today is a day that we want to give a special tribute to Paul Gray. Paul Gray has been part of uh, Still Growing in Grace for many years. Um, he has been an inspiration, a person who's spoken much into my life. Uh, a mentor I kind of reached out to when I knew he'd be the safe person to get an opinion from. <laughs> he always was. He was great. And so uh, he passed away uh, not too long ago and it kind of caught everybody off guard. Actually, it did. Um, so what I want to do today, uh, I want to re-air a tribute interview that was done on his final episode of Grace to All with Paul Gray. And so this was aired a week ago, I believe, maybe a week and a half. Um, but I'm, I, as always, I've always, Paul's always given me permission to re-air the program uh, where I get to participate in it. And so uh, he's been very free with that. And so I'm re-airing the final one. Um, uh, usually I cut off the introduction and the, and, and uh, to the program if it's somebody else's program, but because it's Paul's voice, I'm going to keep the intro. I want to hear his voice again. Oh my goodness. Ah, I didn't think this would be hard today. Yeek. So, um, my hope today is, uh, um, that you'll hear the heart of a man who emulated grace better than I've ever seen in most people's lives. Um, there are a few really good teachers out there who seem to have a, an authentic gentleness with their message. Some, it's hard to tell because they, they can flip back and forth between bombastic and kind, but Paul was always consistently kind. And there's a few other teachers like that too. Brad Jerzak is one of those teachers that's consistently kind. Um, William Paul Young, consistently kind. Baxter Kruger, consistently kind. And those kinds of voices um, I sit up and listen to because they seem to emulate and reflect the authentic Christ in them most consistently. And um, I want to honor that. I want to be more like that myself. Um, but anyway, so this next uh, 50 minutes is going to be a wonderful tribute. Oh, by the way, hey, Mary, good morning, Paul. Uh, Paul was, it says Paul was V. She's probably going to say he was a very amazing guy because uh, she would have heard Paul. She would have met Paul too, Mary. I met Mary last night. We, we went to listen to um, uh, Brad Jerzak in Mississauga, Ontario. It was really, really good. Um, yeah, Mary says, a very special man whom I've had the privilege of knowing. And yes, it was an honor and a privilege. So I'm watching live. Uh, I've not heard the entire interview yet. Uh, I was part of it, but you can't remember the interviews when you're actually recording. So I'm listening with you today. So please comment and tell us where you're watching from. Um, and just kind of interact with me. I'm, I'm sitting here live. As soon as this is over, I'll come right back on and wrap this up. But uh, Paul Gray, we love you. Uh, you are greatly loved and will be deeply missed. But let's, let's hear his voice one more time in the introduction. And then one of his key guys that helped uh, air his material and edit is hosting this program. And you'll recognize some of the faces in this, in this group interview giving tribute to Paul Gray. Here we go. Welcome to Grace to All. I'm your host, Paul Gray. You've probably used the word grace, sang amazing grace, or said grace at a meal. But did you know that God's grace is way better than we can even imagine, and that you and all people already have an abundant supply of God's unlimited amazing grace? Today, we're going to hear the truth about God's amazing grace to all people. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be inspired and awakened to the amazing treasures that you already possess. This is truth that you can handle. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome to Grace to All with Paul Gray. I'm Chris Lanning. I've had the honor of editing nearly every episode of Grace to All on behalf of MediaMar, the company that Paul partnered with to produce this incredible podcast. Now, if you're a regular listener, you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, on September 22nd, 2022, the Holy Spirit, or grace as Paul calls her, took Paul by the hand and led him into the community of saints and into the holy presence of Jesus and Papa, as Paul referred to God. While we celebrate this for Paul, we, of course, mourn the loss of his presence among us. And we just didn't feel right letting the podcast simply end. So this episode, we have brought together just a small cross-section of the many guests that he had on the show that Paul also called friend. We're here to talk about Paul and his ministry and his beliefs and just share and reminisce. Now, before we get into it, I want to introduce you to the guest on the show, and I'll do it in alphabetical order with one exception. I'm sure Paul would agree, ladies first. So our first guest is Catherine Toon. Now, Catherine is a retired physician who is now an ordained apostle and prophet. She's author of Marked by Love, Rare and Beautiful Treasures, and How to Hear God, an Experiential Journey. She's a speaker a coach, and host of her own podcast, Perspectives with Catherine Toon. Catherine was a guest on three episodes of Grace to All. Welcome, Catherine. I'm so happy to be here. So honored to be here. So I'm going to ask each of you this, but how did you first meet Paul? So I met Paul uh, early on. It was through social media. And, uh, you know, we he's, he's such a beautiful heart. We hit it off immediately. Um, I guessed it on his podcast. He guessed it on mine. And then uh, he was traveling through Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, where I live. And we got to go out to dinner, got to meet Kitsy. It was amazing. And oh, little known fact. This is so fun. Kitsy was the second grade teacher at the school that I went to in elementary school when I was in second grade, except for I was in the other other teachers class so we have a little bit of history grew up in lawrence kansas uh where uh they live so that was really a a sweet starting point but just to be able to resonate with uh uh, paul's heart and his inclusion it just drew us together immediately even on something as random as social media that's great thank you so much our next guest even though i told you i was going to do this in different order but we'll go alphabetically mike popovich Now, Mike is an aeronautical engineer and a serial entrepreneur. He's also founder of Freedom Ministries, and he often talks on blending science and scripture. Mike appeared on four episodes of Grace to All. Welcome, Mike. Hey, welcome, guys. Honored to be here. So how did you first meet Paul? Uh, Very similar to Catherine. I actually had to go look when you emailed us. I don't even remember how I met Paul because they've been friends so quickly. But it was on social media, he had reached out, and I think uh, with probably all the guests here, just our common belief of grace to all, that uh, it's for everybody. It's for every human being that's that's ever walked this earth. And so, uh, and then we, once we got to know each other, Paul and Kitsy and I, uh, we had some very common interests in uh, both music. We're both musicians and uh, love athletics. And so, Catherine, you'll appreciate this too. He he uh, took me to my first Rock Chalk Jayhawk game this year. And that was one of my bucket lists. I told Paul, I said, uh, I need to get there. He said, I can make it happen. So that's how we met. Awesome. That's great. All right. Another one of our guests is Mike Zanker. Now, this one is north of the border here. Mike is the director of Growing in Grace Ministries Canada. He is pastor of New Hope Fellowship in Elmira, Ontario. He also has his own podcast. He's host of the Still Growing in Grace podcast. And Mike appeared in three episodes of Grace to All. Welcome, Mike. Hey, good to be with you. So how did you, I I, I think you and um, Paul sort of know each other a little bit, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I've known for a few years and he's been fun. Um, I got to know him online first, but it was connected through a ministry work that I was doing. And so one day um, 
uh, had a, an event down in Florida. So we were in St. Petersburg area and I knew I was going to meet him and I had enough video calls with him. And so I'm downstairs early because I like being early for events. I hate late. I just do. And so I'm waiting at this elevator and uh, my head's looking, you know, my height and the door opens and then my head goes down. <laughs> but what? Paul Gray? You're short. <laughs> And he looked at me, yeah, <laughs> I, I, cause he's, he, I can't tell height in a video. Yeah. And so he looked like a big man, like a big guy. And he was not a big guy, but he's big in my mind and big in his love. Um, and we just, we just connected more and more. We had a good chat that day and just kept talking. Um, I may have been on his program maybe three times. So the other Mike got four, um, but I've had, uh, I've had Paul on my program several times and in different conferences. Uh, he was part of my forgiveness conference that I did uh, at the beginning of 2022. Um, and, and people have just been drawn to him because he's authentic. He doesn't have an agenda. He's not trying to grow a ministry. And you can tell that like right on the front end. You can sniff that BS pretty quick. And you knew when you met Paul, he was the real deal. And he kind of set a new model for what, what we do should look like. And I loved that. So that, that's how I met him. It was great. Yeah. When I first um, was put in touch with him when he was coming and starting the podcast, one of the things that Mario, who is the owner of Media Mars, said is he goes, you just get this impression that he's doing this because he's got a story to tell and he wants it to get out there. That is the only thing that is on his mind is just getting that information out there. And I think that is absolutely 100% true. And, and he was also not so much looking at what's the next step. He was resting in the moment on whatever's going on and whoever's there. He wasn't looking over the shoulder going, okay, what's the next opportunity? It was, this is where Papa's got me and this is where I'm going to love whoever's there. Until Papa tells me otherwise. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Another guest is Richard Murray. Now, Richard is a defense attorney. He's author of numerous books, including God versus Evil, The Power, and The Jesus Mood. He's a prolific blogger and a proclaimer of the real good news. Richard also appeared on Grace to All four times. Welcome, Richard. Well, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really honored. Um, I tell you, you know, the day that you sent the notice for this tribute, I looked at my memories. I look at my memories every day and, you know, edit stuff and things like that from things I've written before. And at the very first memory I had was a post that Paul was the last person who had liked it. So his name appeared. Paul Gray liked this post. Even, you know, he, he, it only mentioned the last person. The odds on that are pretty astronomical. But I, I went. I mean, I just shed a tear, you know, for for uh, for him. I met him uh, on social media as well many years ago, and uh, he and I—I I cannot tell you how many times we've talked, messaged. Uh, we like to talk theology, but then at the same, by the same token, it was always relational theology. He was the most disarming person I think I've ever met. He just, you know just this you know there were no defenses you didn't have any defenses up around him you did you just trusted that the interaction was pure and good it, you know he's just fresh water he was a fresh stream and uh i've never met any you know uh anyone that i would classify just this 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 exact way he is the most disarming and uh genuine and guileless person i think i've ever met and uh I wish, you know, I was thinking today, if you send him into a war zone, I think he would bring peace. <laughs> and not that he had, not that he would have any grand plan, but then he would just start bringing humanity into it and get the sides telling their stories. Because as you said, he has a story to tell, but part of his story is he wants to help us tell our stories in, in a very unselfish and generous way. So that, those are my thoughts. Yeah. And I think that disarming worked great. Because obviously, as he's spreading this message, particularly with grace and the grace movement, a lot of people that are ingrained in, you know, their churches and to religion, immediately your defenses go up. I know even mine did. The first few podcast episodes that I edited, I'm like, should I even be listening to this? Like, it just feels wrong. But he just had such a way of relating it. 
and doing it in such a kind way. Though he did change his stride. If you remember, he used to really bang down on religion. And then I think it was around somewhere around episode 250 or something. He goes, somebody's convinced me. I'm just going to stop talking about that. <laughs> you know? I'm just going to focus on the positives. Um, and so, yeah, you're right. I can't imagine there's anybody that would not like Paul if they met him. So that'd be cool. All right, so we were, we're gonna work through a couple of different questions and some discussion. We'll just kind of see where it takes us. However, one of our guests, unfortunately, is gonna have to leave a little bit early. So Mike uh, Popovich, I'm gonna bring you back on. And yes, sir. I'll kind of give a preview of the questions because I'm gonna bounce a few of them off you, but I'll start with this one. So what stories, do you have any stories, funny, interesting, or touching that you would like to share about Paul? Oh gosh, I think uh, I think all of you have said exactly what we all feel that uh, Paul and Kitsy and the whole family is. It really is grace to everyone they meet. It's very disarming. It's very peaceful. Um, and I'm kind of a wild guy, so <laughs> yeah, uh, he could calm me down a little bit, and uh, uh, it's just fun. But what I realized, like these guys are fun. I told, I told Barb, I said, gosh, we can double date these guys all the time. And so, uh, uh, yes, you know, like I shared briefly earlier, we both love um, music and we love sports. And so uh, we got to do some fun things like the, the Jayhawks game and then they won the national championship, which I know Paul and Kitsy are really excited about. And, and uh, kind of like you, Richard, the, the odds of, of some of the serendipities, the last time I saw them, they were out here in Denver to a Chris Bode concert. Some of you guys don't know who Chris Bode is, one of the, the greatest jazz trumpetists in the world at the Denver Botanical Gardens. And uh, I was telling Kitsy, I said, um, I just looked at your picture of us four at the concert. And then I got the news and I said, uh, it's so awesome to me that Paul being a trumpet player, jazz player, um, you know, in imagery, the writers of scripture talked about the last trumpet. When the last trumpet blows, we rest our head. It was imagery to them that when the spirit is released in the secret place, we rest our head. And that was the trumpet. It was the spirit being released from man. And I said, I'll always treasure that. It's a, uh, I don't know if that's, to me, I had a blast there, but it was very moving to me that the trumpet player that brings peace entered the heavenly peace, the heavenly Jerusalem. It says when the last trumpet sounds, it was imagery to them that the spirit is left. It's left the noise in the secret place and they rested their head. And so, well done, Paul. Love and appreciate you. Yeah, his music is just incredible. Now, what stands out most for you in the message that he's bringing? Like, is there something that in his message that really hit home with you? Yeah, I, I think uh, for everyone here, just that uh, the grace was not reserved for if you're in this club that you said the magic words or something. It was to all humanity. And uh, he showed that. He you know, I was thinking about this today. I think all of you guys referenced this briefly is I've never met anybody say anything negative about Paul at all. So he walked his message. He, he lived his message. He and Kitsy and the whole family. And uh, that's huge to me. And I think that's huge to, to my younger kids, my the younger generation. That's big because they see a lot of hypocrisy in religion and, you know, people saying one thing and doing the other, but Paul lived it they, and they loved him. My kids loved him. So that, that's where I knew it was so generational that, uh, uh, you know, they have a few more whiskers on than Barb and I, yet my kids love them. So I just think that's the greatest walk is living what he taught. That is so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So let me turn those questions actually to the rest of you. But one of the questions I left out for you, Mike, was because we sort of covered a little bit in the intro, but I want to go back and revisit it in case people want to add some more. I want to talk about Paul himself. I'm, I mean, again, we all had different levels of how well we knew him. But what were some of the things that really jumped out that you really liked about Paul, other than obviously what we've already mentioned about nobody not liking him? Is there anything else that anyone wanted to share about that? Well, I've got, I've got something. Okay. Um, the, um, he, he had childlike enthusiasm. He had, you know, when a, some people are enthusiastic, it kind of turns you off. You know, it rolls your eyes, maybe makes you feel a little inadequate, you know. But when he got enthusiastic, it never offended. And it just, it made you smile and want to jump in with him. I had, I had written a post one time, and it was, you know, it was a little cheesy. 
but it had to do with the, I was describing the, the carnal will as it opposes Jesus in a boxing ring. And I just use some boxing language and, you know, some rhetoric and all that. So what, so what Paul does is he, uh, he takes it upon himself to produce a boxing match where he narrates the post. And he talks like Howard Cosell. He's, I mean, he's not imitating Howard Cosell, but he's, he's like a boxing announcer. And there's cheers and ebb and flow. And it cheers as the fight's going on. And the whole purpose of the fight is Jesus never hits back. He lets us hit him until we punch ourselves out. And then he hugs us and restores us. But, but, but when Paul did that on his own and sent it to me, I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And it was so sweet. And, and, and if you could ever listen to his voice, he is, he's so ex- he put he performed it. He put his excitement into it. And that was just so childlike and so, so just clean. That's just the word I keep hearing in all this. He was so clean. Welcome to this epic and cataclysmic clash of cosmic wills. In this corner in our fight tonight, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the baggy and ill-fitting trunks of crippling self-consciousness, originally hailing from the planet Earth and tipping the eternal scales at a very feathery and insubstantial weight of wisdom, known to have the feeblest of focuses and the wobbliest of willpowers, all the while possessing a very short-armed reach and shallow grasp of eternal realities, not to mention a very fickle nature, a sometimes petty perspective, and an incredibly uninformed and myopic temporal agenda, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the human will. And in this corner, wearing the seamless cloak of oceanic compassion, originally hailing from heaven's heart, checking in at a scale-crushing weight of eternal glory and gargantuan goodness, known to have a single eye, an indefatigable heart to serve his beloved Abba's agenda of love and light in reconciling all creation to the Godhead, all the while possessing an endless fountain of patience, a limitless reach to rescue others from the uttermost to the guttermost, and an omni willingness to help every one of his most vehement haters, no matter what the cost. He always turns the other cheek, walks the extra mile, gives the additional garments off his back, and sends the needed rain and energizing sunshine on both the good and evil alike. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the Lamb, the Logos, and the Lord. I give you Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, it was quite a fight. The human will opened the fight with a flurry of punches to the Lord's face and stomach, mixing them with illegal headbutts and below-the-belt blows. It seemed at several points that Jesus was down and out for the count, but he would not stay down. Jesus would, at the count of nine, repeatedly rise up off the mat and smile a swollen but sincere smile at the human will as he himself continued to be pummeled and pulverized. But in the 15th round, an amazing thing happened. The human will started to tire. It had completely punched itself out. It had thrown everything it had at the Lord, but could not prevail. The Lord never struck back, not one time, but instead just absorbed all the human will's hate and hostility. As the human will's arms lowered from overexertion and extreme fatigue, The human will's line of vision was no longer blocked by its own boxing gloves. The human will could at last look Jesus in the eye and see him as he truly was in all his self-giving and curative love. The human will finally realized that this was no enemy to resist, but a friend and a brother to wholeheartedly embrace. It had finally had enough. The human will slumped to its knees, sobbing and was counted out as cathartic tears stained the mat. Jesus bent down and lifted the human will up and embraced it. The fight was over. That was an awesome segment. I loved it when he did that, and it was just so cool. So it's awesome. Thank you, Richard. Anyone else? Yeah, I wanted to kind of tag team a little bit off of that because there is the innocence and innocence with him because he had nothing to hide. It was just all open. And he would look at you, kind of shake his head a little bit and give give you that smile and then kind of pause. And you just felt this warmth exuding from him. Even when you were kind of even in the middle of a, 
of a uh, an interview or whatever when he's greeting you it's just warmth and it spoke so much louder than any of the verbiage and i i think that 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 child likeness um is so inspiring because we can get so jaded and then we can also get so impressed with our own head knowledge right i mean here you're richard you're having these sort of deep theological discussions and you guys are having a blast doing it and so um i, I just think there was a, a willingness to have fun with it and 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 take something very serious but make it accessible and 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 just hug the whole world with it. And it's just, a, it's such a beautiful, I don't know, inspiring way that exuded itself before he even opened his mouth. And I just love that about him. Oh, thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I, I remember that like sometimes, and it would depend on the guests that he would have. Some guests he just was so amazed with, and you could just hear all the excitement of, you know, him really appreciating what the guest was saying. And it just, if you weren't already excited about it, you got it because, you know, you could just feel that energy coming out. It was amazing. Anybody I else? Saw some, yeah, I saw something really fun in him that kind of threw me because he's so experienced in life. And listening to the funeral, if you haven't listened to the funeral service he got to, Celebration of Life. Um, but to see all the stuff he's done, it's like, man, he's got serious life experience. But in our in our interviews or podcasts or the video recordings we did, he did something that very few people do. He took notes. He goes, Oh, Oh, oh let me, Oh, let me write that down. He starts writing it down thinking, dude, you can just rewind. You don't have to write it down. <laughs> and I told him that in one of them, but it just made me realize none of us have arrived. Um, each of us still has a different level of wow. And he taught me that, you can't get upset at somebody else not seeing your wow. Because sometimes in the religious world, um, we get mad at people for not seeing it or seeing it differently. And we have no patience for that. And that's not Christ-like at all. And so he showed a Christ-like patience um, that was non-combative, um, something that's rare as we unlearn this journey of unlearning is painful and i think some people's pendulum swing way too far in their bombastic statements when the statements are not the issue and paul showed a listening ear mm -hmm. and realizing hey there there's a and i use this term a lot menu item for the topic we just are now discussing that i didn't have before and so he he was open and teachable because he trusts the holy spirit to figure out if this was true or not but he's there to listen and let the holy spirit do the work and i thought that's that's so cool because it's not about being right it's about being loving and paul exuded that i loved it yeah absolutely thanks mike yeah i just you know i think back to some of the stuff and you're right it just he just let the spirit do it he never felt forced it never felt planned out even he just did it though I say that knowing that he actually a lot of times would have his episodes recorded and scheduled months in advance. So to say he was just, he wasn't winging it, but he just was doing it as the spirit moved into it. It was awesome. I, yeah. I'd like to, on that point, I'd like to share something. When, when I did one of the podcasts with him, we talked probably 30 or 45 minutes outside the podcast. And he was telling me about jazz music. And what really, and I saw as he was telling me that, I, I could see this is how he's at spiritually. Because he would always say how jazz musicians never play it the same way twice. That they're always looking to improvise, be in the moment, make it new, make it fresh. And I can't, And as he was talking, I was thinking, Paul, that's you. You know, that, that's you. You make everything fresh, you improvise. It's not, it's never stale. It's never the exact same thing. You talk grace a thousand different ways, and everyone is fresh and it's spontaneous, and it's that spontaneity. I think that you know is part of his spirit from his music. That I don't know which came first, which spontaneity came first, but I think they both operated in him and just made him. It, you know, it was like saying you, you've heard the grace message before, but you didn't hear it that way. You didn't hear it with this fresh take on it. It was always you know a, a neat little twist to it that that made it fresh and. 
And uh, so I, I really, he taught me about, I didn't know anything about jazz music, but I was just, my mouth was open just listening to him talk about it. Yeah. I know he often talked about the sympathetic vibrations, and I think that's really what he was. He could just feel what you felt and then kind of sympathize with that and, and give you back what you needed to hear. Um, I had put down, you know, I loved it every now and then he would do a solo episode where he would actually tell a story. And to me, he reminded me of Paul Harvey. I mean, just that nice Midwestern accent. And he just told that story. I just so much wanted him to one time just end the show with. You know, I'm Paul Gray. Good day. You know, that would have been a blast. Anyone else have something to say about Paul before we move on to the next question? I, I just have to run, guys. Okay. So, Chris, thanks so much for putting this together. No and Catherine, Mike, Richard, uh, thanks for a beautiful tribute to my friends. And Paul and Kitsy and the whole family, just love from the Popoviches. We love you tons. Look forward to seeing you soon. Right. See you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You. All right. So I had asked Mike this. I want to hear some great stories about Paul. Now, again, they can be funny, interesting, or even touching stories, but I know there's some stories out there. I want to hear them. It's going to be hard to tell stories when we met him online. Um, oh, that's very true. few times we were in person. Um, but perhaps another spin that might be more helpful is how did he impact people's lives? And we've, all three, all three of us that are still here, and even yourself, Chris, you have met people, and if you're editing all these things, you, you see much more than we would have, yeah. and how he was received. So I think it's, what did he, what was his life message to everyone he met? That's a really important comment, because we send a message to everybody. You know, if we bump into somebody um, that we had a problem with in the past, well, guess what? Our faces show we don't like that person much anymore. So our life message is, I don't like you. What did Paul send to each person he met? And uh, I know the show is called Grace to All, but he really was Paul Gray Grace to All. <laughs> yeah. That's good. You can I think... you, Catherine. You can, you can jump into it. <laughs> Right. Sorry. Um, well, you know, and I, and I think a lot of that was like you're included because you felt included. You felt embraced uh, when you bumped into him. So I, I think that's a beautiful message. I did want to share one thing before I actually met him in person. I think it was I think it was the first one. It could have been the second one, the second recording. Um, I was having a really hard day <laughs> and I was like sliding into home base to make it in time to, you know, for the podcast. And a lot of it was because my son who has autism, we were just having fits and I'm just getting that. So I'm, I'm kind of flustered, whatever. I just don't have it all together. Um, and still don't have it all together, but that's okay. Um, I'm relaxed about it, but, um, but it was, it, it was really sweet because number one, um, he was, he was messing around with his, um, sort of like the more technical stuff. So here I'm kind of flustered with the whole, like, okay, I got to get myself together, get my head into the game. And he's like, you know, um, you know, so we're two kind of flustered people <laughs> and engaging. Um, but what was really sweet because it was at that time when I just shared, you know, I just my son is autism, we just had a big spin out, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Well, and he shared about his precious grandson who also struggles with autism. And so a lot of times we would have conversations, um, either just before a podcast, after a podcast, or just emailing back and forth, um, sort of getting the status and the skinny about how things were going. And then, of course, this ties in with his daughter, single mom, and that gorgeous heart. And, you know, it was, it was, um, it was incredibly meaningful when, when, when you, when you struggle with something that's got your heartstrings attached to it so much to have someone else recognize that and be able to resonate with some of the the struggles it was beautiful so there was this constant checking in in this whole thing that was a struggle in common that is a very particular struggle and it wasn't just a passive interest it was a shared a sh you know a shared struggle and then of course shared victories and all of that along the way and it was just beautiful and then as as you know um we got to know more about his heart for the single mom. Um, what a what an incredible thing to carry 
um, as a um, as a this you know this, this man who has all this experience has a beautiful ministry has all this yada yada and has this incredible heart for these women and I I was just really blown away by his compassion uh, in that. Uh, and then also just by his caring, just his genuine caring for, a, you know, a, a felt need. And that, that was just a, a beautiful thing that we shared that really, really touched my heart. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I know when he first was talking about his ministry, I just, it, it really, it even touched me when he's talking about, you know, sing, you could hear that passion that he has for the single moms and just the great work that he's doing with the Grace Restoration Team with that. Awesome. Anyone else? You know, there was a um, there was a time to you know as, as childlike and as tender as he was, he was also dogged. I mean, he tracked something down and he wanted to nail it down, very thorough. And uh, I remember one time we were on it might have been Mike's forgiveness conference, but I couldn't swear to it because I've done more than one thing with him before, where we were both a part of a panel, and somebody had said something about the Sodom and Gomorrah, I think. Mm -hmm. And he knew, he knew there was a verse where, where it, it, it said God restored, restored them. Um, and, uh, so he, but he couldn't remember it. And, uh, I once knew it, but I totally forgot it, this particular passage. And, uh, so anyway, he calls me a week later and, and, and I pick up the phone and he says, and then he gives me the sight to the verse. <laughs> That's the first thing out of his mouth. He said, <laughs> you know, he just wanted to share it and yeah. say, I knew there was a verse and that was the verse. And he just wanted me to know it. And when I appreciated it, it brought it back, you know, it brought it back to the memory. But how dogged that was, you know, he wanted to nail down, but he's dogged for God's goodness. He's dogged for an Abba who is only and always good. And, um, you know, he was very, uh, he reflected the nature of God. You know, uh, as an attorney, you know, I have to sometimes go to war, you know, verbally and, and otherwise. But but I look at Paul and, you know, you say earlier that he backed off being aggressive. I, I'm sure he was only aggressive in his own eyes because I, I think when he was aggressive, it didn't come across as aggressive because he was so soft. Um, but, uh, you know, I, he's an inspiration to me to always keep to, to never put on to the game face to try to not put on the game face for battle, you know, and, and to just keep on that tender, that, that lamb's face. And he always wore the lamb's face. That whole disarming thing. You're right. I got an email, like the same, a couple of days after that incident of can't remember that verse <laughs> here. I told you it was around. I knew I had it. <laughs> I still have it saved. It's so funny. <laughs> I just, you know what? I just realized something. Um, and maybe this is for me personally, really precious hearing of all the people who had access to him. I'm, I'm getting this chills uh, to be included on that list. It's like, okay. Okay. I feel really special now mm -hmm. that he would take time to make me feel important. You know? no matter what's going on in my life or his life, the fact that I had access to him, like really, I, I, I'm just here as I'm hearing all these connections and people he got to know. It's like, wow, it's an honor. Oh my God. Do you, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I just caught that. Oh my goodness. That's like, I'm super thankful now. You know, you know, he's almost like in a way he's almost apostate when you think about it, because he's, he's bringing people together. He's bringing a web, you know, not by organization and not by structure, but just by relationships and by encounters, you know, with, with his book that he wrote with all the testimonies in it, you know, wouldn't that be the way a real apostle works under the radar? And you don't even, you don't even realize it until he's gone, you know, that, that Hey, that was an apostolic function. He was performing. Yeah. Cause you bring up his latest book, the grace to all book. And, there were so many components of that because he literally was trying to become a resource that people could use to find and connect with all other people. They're kind of like-minded um, because he talked all the time where he thought he was the only one for a while. And then he discovered the internet and started meeting other people and meeting you folks. 
And so he really had a heart for making sure that nobody would feel like they were the only one, that they would know how to reach out, you know, and touch. And then to, out of that, then support his, you know, grace restoration team on top of it through the book. I mean, it was like a win-win situation. Amen. That's ministry within a ministry within a ministry, right? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> awesome. So for me, one of the things that I, um, just kind of an interesting story for me is that, you know, editing a podcast, we normally take out ums and ahs and stutters and, you know, if people pause or whatever. And when he would do an episode with a guest, I would be taking out the usual number that I would be taking out on an ordinary podcast for people. But when he did a solo podcast, when he was essentially doing his sermons, it was just let him go. I mean, it was rare <laughs> that I would have to make a cut. He just was so in the spirit and so in the message and he just flowed. Um, and I just always thought that was so funny. I'm like, okay, is this a soul episode or a guest episode? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it's going to affect how long it's going to take to edit. <laughs> That's a good example of speaking out. And giving things of the heart. Yeah, it was definitely coming from his heart. I'm sorry, Catherine, what did you say? I said, some of us are more labor intensive, uh, but that's true. But he was smooth, right? He was smooth. And mm -hmm. you could just, you could just see him just flowing. He yeah. was really amazing. Yeah. Well, and on the guest episodes, one of the reasons why he'd often stutter is because he was so into listening to the guest and trying to hear what they <laughs> said and thinking about what he wanted to ask because there's new questions that it, you know, spun off of that. So he really was engaged and that just often he had to take those few moments to sort of piece together how he wanted to ask that, which is great because I'd rather someone be engaged. And he would, he would write notes of what you said earlier yeah. in the interview. I remember, you know, he would say something like, Richard, you said a while ago, and then you could tell he was looking, you know, he was looking at it and because and he wanted to quote it exactly. But I mean, how many people do that? They're always thinking of the next question. He's actually, like Mike said earlier, taking notes of what you're saying there and then trying to bounce off of it and take it, you know, take it to another place. Yeah. Or even somewhere deeper if he heard something in there that he thought there was more to explore there, you know. Mm. He was easy to have interviews with. Like, it was just like, hit record. For, sorry, for me, no edits. Because I can't be bothered. Let's keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. No, it's okay. <laughs> what you what you did is is like you gotta know what you're doing. I don't have that skill, and so I knew any time and any, everyone in the panel here, every time we do a conversation or recording, somehow it's smooth, it's real. I don't have to remove much once in a blue moon, but never with this this group that we we've been chatting with today. And so Paul was always an easy conversation, and we always went longer than we said. We just because one thing led to another. <laughs> I was just saying, you just schedule in the extra time because once you get rolling, you're just having so much fun. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, let's just keep on rolling. Maybe we should make this a two-parter. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, you know, I, as I recollect back, I'm not sure that he planned any of mine to be two-parters. And then, and I seem to remember that Catherine too that he would say something like, "Hey, maybe we just need to make this a two-parter. Let's let's divide it up." Chris, let me ask you a question. Yes. Then. From his interviews, uh, the rest of us will recognize this. He kept it to a certain period of time. He really did keep it tight. Is that because of you? Absolutely. We preached in the head tw 22 minutes. And boy, he would try to keep it to 22 minutes. It was amazing. I, I wish all my hosts playing, were like so that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. But that's how the two-parter got started because he would start to realize it's almost a 22-minute mark and he wanted to talk with people longer. And so he would just, you know, ask it. And of course, who's going to say no to him? It's like, and you want to stick around and do another episode? Sure. You know, it's Good like, point. I had a flight to catch, but no big deal. You know, we'll just stick around and talk. <laughs> he is going to be missed. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And Kitsy. Oh, my goodness. Kitsy. She's amazing. I got to hear, you know, I text her here and there, back and forth. And, you know, honestly, I didn't know they were the same height. I found that out in the pictures. <laughs> that was fun. But uh, she's a dear saint. And I am blown away that she is continuing a group conversation. Um, that Something that was going on with Paul that he started. I don't know if it's a house church or video church. I just, I don't know. But I am thrilled that the spark of life and light that he started is continuing 
and I hope we get a moment to talk about light in a few minutes. I hope so. Cause I think that was one of his big topics. So. Well, that actually leads us to the next question. I was going to say what stands out most for you in the message that he brings. Light. <laughs> Cause <laughs> in fact, when we were talking to, I, I did a couple in my interviews, I just aired re aired uh, two shows from two years ago and they weren't 22 minutes. They were almost an hour each. It's like, it was, I couldn't cut them because yeah. it, continuity mattered, but I just re-aired them on still growing grace as the, the top two interviews with, with Paul. And the, he and I both had a mutual excitement for what does light mean in the scriptures? And we had fun because he caught verses that I never caught. I shared verses. He said, where's that? Tell me where that is. And we, we got all excited. It's like, oh, my goodness, this is deeper and better than what we were told. No way. It was just so much fun bantering back and forth. Um, but I think light, when he started doing the light walker stuff, um, uh, the point was the light of Christ being in and through everyone was the beginning of my understanding that Christ could possibly be in all. And of course, now I see that, but that was the bridge I, that worked for me. And uh, Paul was on that journey and uh, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to reshape my thinking around it and how to reword. So that was a gift he gave to me. That's awesome. Anyone else would have it really stood out from the message that he brought to you, brought to us. Me, the concept of inclusion, which is really that, right? Uh, it's this, it's this, it's this cosmic embrace, um, and this this concept of light in all, and this cosmic embrace made you feel embraced and made you feel that wherever you were in your process of understanding whatever you were grappling with, uh, you know, um, it's you. You're, you're good. You're fine. It's it, you, you go there and grapple with that safely because you're already included. And so um, I just think, I just think that is such, a, and that was part of his, he was so open. And so that whole concept of not meeting anyone outside, not meeting anyone with light, not in them. Right. Um, uh, is beautiful. And you saw it like, you know, even when we went to the restaurant, and uh, we had dinner. Um, you just thought how he treated the staff, how he treated Kitsy, how he treated my husband he never met. And, you know, it was just, just beautiful. So, yeah, I would say inclusion um, and all, all of what that means on a very deep level. Uh, yeah. How about you, Richard? Yeah, yeah, if I could add one thing, it would be the Holy Spirit. Because I believe when I, when I would talk with him, not only could I feel the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, as good as the grace message is uh, on a lot of different levels, sometimes there's a little anemia, uh, anemia with regard to the, the, the place, the prominence, the preeminence and the prominence of the Spirit. And yet he was always bold as a line about the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, the first, my spiritual dad, I, I pay him a compliment that I will also pay Paul. And it was that uh, when I met my spiritual father, he was the first man I had met who talked about God as though he were real. And I mean, excited, real. And Paul reminds me of my spiritual dad, even though, you know, I, I'm not that much younger than Paul, but um, it, he talked about God and the Holy Spirit like they were real and present. And uh, I just really appreciated that. And that's what got me excited. Because, you know, and I'm not, and people can religiously talk about the Holy Spirit and, you know, it's, it's, it's flat, but not, not Paul. It's part of his, that jazz thing. He jazzed up the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, when I first started, I was, you know, I, I was like, should I even be listening to this? Is this like sacrilege? You know, like blew my mind when he called God Papa, like that just, you know, it just didn't sit well with me. And we were probably maybe 50 or 60 episodes into it. And I was doing another podcast where I was, I personally was doing like a daily reading of a song. And he's like, you know what? Why don't you come on as a guest? And I, and I hemmed and hawed. And, and really, I never told him the reason why I didn't want to come on as a guest. Because I knew what that first question was going to be. How is your understanding of grace affected the way you live? And I'm like, I, I didn't feel like I was on that journey, you know? Um, but I think over time and just listening to him in this disarming way that we talked about, 
I began to see it better. You know, you know, Catherine talked about inclusion. I saw that from a standpoint where he was talking about just not being judgmental. I know that I was a very judgmental person, you know, still working on that. But I try to catch myself more and more doing that and just, you know, again, thinking just the word grace and that everyone's included and understanding that's just not my place to judge them. You know, they're they're on their journey. I'm on my journey. But you but like you said, Richard, the Holy Spirit, you know, that concept of Jesus being inside of us through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit being inside of us and using us, you know, and living in us to to reach out to people. That one really stuck with me. And that's that's kind of where I am in my journey now is like really pondering on that and trying to feel that, you know, inside. You, OK, is everyone still hearing me? Yes. Okay. Cause I got a message that popped up and said I was offline. So I was just checking. Uh, let me go back. So, yeah. So I just, that's where I am with that journey and just feeling like that the Holy spirit is there. And, you know, I'm still not as far along as most of all of you, but Paul really got me walking that walk and, and going through the things with the guests talking about the different translation biases and understanding. If you go back to the root, there's a lot more that can be found there. So he has had a major impact on me through that. And that's kind of what I remember most about just even the whole Grace to All podcast. And he would correct you right now. And he would say to you, uh, there isn't the, there isn't equality in here. Like there isn't, oh, you guys are so far along and I'm not as far along. That's baloney. He would say, this is where God has you, period. There's no comparison. And that was a gift he brought. Yeah. Since his light journey was a, a big one. It's like the sun reflects off the moon and the moon gives light, not the moon, but the sun, but it looks like the moon in the same way. I think Paul has now continued to reflect light wherever he's been mm. and it still will continue to reflect. We're going to see the light that came from Paul into all of our lives. And it's going to have a ricochet domino effect for years to come. His Thanks. influence is not done. It's only begun. And I think the fruit of what he began, boy, oh boy, we're going to have a serious jazz celebration in heaven when we kind of come <laughs> together with all this. But that's why I think, I think there's going to be a jazz concert. But yeah. He's going to be sitting in the jazz section. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he had such an influence and I think it's not done. No. And I, and I'd like to see a lot of the stuff he started just kind of continue on, you know, and really just keep that message out there. Cause he just had the greatest way of delivering it, you know? Well, I, I want to emphasize one more thing too. And it's what y'all said. I mean, y'all have already said this, but it just really comes back to me now that he, he helped us not feel alone. And, um, you know, he, he was an encourager. And he and he, he wanted us to know we weren't alone, and um and and it can be lonely, you know, when when you when you make this stand and being you know even through social media it does it for better or worse it gives you connections but it can also give you some toxic exposure as well. But he was just again always fresh water and just wanted us to know we're not alone, you know we're we're not there's there's a remnant and the remnant's everybody. <laughs> That's the, that's the twist of the message. There's a remnant, and it's all of us. <laughs> all remaining. Yes. So obviously, he had a very large audience of people that followed him, whether that was through the podcast or through his videos, through his online church. If you could speak to those people in the audience that really, you know, are on that journey, who really loved hearing Paul, what's one action that they could do just that they could take to honor Paul? and the ministry that he's put together? I would say stop trying to grow. Stop trying to understand. Because if we're new to this thing of what grace is or new to unlearning, um, God's in charge of the journey, not you. And you're going to want to try and catch up to somebody, but there isn't a catching up. So I would say definitely don't try to help the Holy Spirit out doesn't need your help, like at all. Learn to walk the path you're on. If your antenna, if, if there's something you can do, put your antenna up to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit might be drawing you towards and who may be coming into your life. That's it. 
Don't overthink the theology. Let Jesus become love. And then you'll start to experience true grace and a truer understanding of what all this is. Well, thanks, Mike. That's hard to follow. <laughs> you did great. Awesome. Um, you know, I, I do think leaning and rusting into grace because she's so good at her job, right? And she really is, is leading her kids, right? God's papa's really leading his kids. And so we're, we're all, we're all growing. And so, and we all have our own journey with that, but it's this relational, comes from this relationship that's already been established and that you're, you're free to express that and do that and be safe in that because God has you and, and you're included. And so I, I just, I just feel like there, I, I want to sort of jump off a little bit off of what you were saying, Mike, about this resting and not the striving. Cause he was very, very relaxed and very open, which helped you relax <laughs> and open up which is beautiful because that's where it all flows out from right and and when you are relaxed and open you can just flow with the spirit and that's and that's just a a beautiful way to live and he modeled that and we can continue that i would echo that and just you know when i think of paul i really think of someone who's present in the moment and he is, he, he, but in a relaxed way, it's like he lived in the Sabbath rest, you know, where he was resting from his own works. And uh, I just echo both, both of what they said, that all of that, all of the, everything that they said leads us it to live fully in the moment. And that's what I think Paul would say to all the people that love him and that listen to him, live in the moment. You have everything you need in the moment right here. You, it's not up in heaven to someone to drag down or down in hell to save up from hell. It's here in your mouth and in your heart. And I think he would, he would just uh, tell you, just have confidence now in the moment and, and be there. Wow. This has been a great conversation. Was there anything else that any of you wanted to add before we go? Paul, we love you. And we're glad that, I mean, he's having a blast. We're actually the one we're, we're kind of like, we're missing you because you're not here, but he's good. <laughs> and he's in that cloud of witnesses championing us on so we can continue to carry on and move forward and all of that but uh, we love you paul and we love you kitsy and um thank you for being a part of our lives it's been an honor amen well thank all of you for joining us for this tribute episode of grace to all with paul gray and i want you to go ahead and check the show notes we'll have information about each of the guests including links to where you can find them and links to the episodes that they were on and this may be the last episode of the podcast of Grace to All with Paul Gray. But the good news is that what Paul shared was timeless. So I actually challenge you as listeners, go back and re-listen to it. We've got 370 plus episodes of Grace to All. You can listen to one a day for over an entire year. And when you've done that, you can start all over again. Amen. Because this is stuff and good news that we need to hear every single day. So in closing, I'd like to say, Paul, thank you for your dedication to spreading the good news. You touch so many people, not just with the podcast, but through your church, New Life Christ, and just the impact you have will be felt for many years to come, undoubtedly. So I will let Paul end this show for you, but everybody have a great day. Oh, man. Thank you, Chris, for hosting that uh, final uh, tribute to Paul on his final podcast. And I love that. that. That's like 300 and what? I forgot what the number was, but that's a lot of episodes to uh, uh, go back and watch and listen to, which is really, really cool. Well, thank you for being a part of today's special uh, tribute to Paul. Uh, he was a great guy. And obviously, you can tell from the interviews and the comments. And that was just a small cross-section. Um, and I'm looking forward to actually getting to know some of his other friends and connections that he uh, was connected to. Um, there's a, this, this community of people who are growing in grace is larger than we ever dreamed of. 
So, all right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, looking forward to the next couple of weeks of uh, programs here on Still Growing in Grace. If you have a topic idea, email us, message us somehow. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on uh, subjects that are worth covering or things that you've inquired about. And if we haven't covered it before, it'd be fun to prepare and get that going. Until next time, please have a fantastic week and we'll catch you later. Join me next time on Still Growing in Grace for more good news. Enjoy previous episodes by downloading our podcast at growingingrace.ca. You can also visit hopefellowshipycc.com to find our service times and location. If this show has been an encouragement to you, please consider making a donation today at growingingrace.ca and help us keep spreading this good news. Thank you again for tuning in to Still Growing in Grace.